Hi, John Malenzak from Presound is here again. This series, we're gonna talk more detail about microphones from the last series with the Blue Devils based on some of the information we found both over the DCI season and here with the East Ascension High School Band. The main thing is that the correct microphone and the correct placement is very important. Don't mess with the board, don't mess with speakers, don't do anything else unless you're sure that the correct microphone is picking up the instrument because that's where a lot of the problems start. So we're gonna talk about the difference in two types of microphones. The first will be dynamic microphones. Now these microphones are designed to have sound pick up from very close maybe six to eight inches away from the sound source, and they're specifically designed so they don't pick up a lot of sounds from around it. So these applications are great for places where you want drums or soloists where you don't want to pick up a lot in the background. Now, you've seen these a lot. The first type we would call a vocal dynamic microphone. It has a little bit bigger of a pattern, and it has the ability to pick up a wide range around it. This is great for sounds that are going to be both what we call on axis and maybe sounds that come in from the side, so you don't have to have everyone right up on front. Whereas an instrument microphone is much more directional. It picks up a lot more of what's in front of it. This is great when I want to isolate a sound such as a drum or a horn soloist and not get anything else around it. The other type of microphone we're going to look at in this series is a condenser microphone. Now this one is a small diaphragm condenser. It's much more sensitive and it's actually designed to pick up sound from very far away. Through trying all of these microphones in various applications, both with DCI and with high schools, we found that this Audio-Technica Pro 37, or a small diaphragm condenser mic, works really well on mallet instruments and for groups of soloists. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this microphone is placed underneath this marimba. So we have two of these Pro 37 small diaphragm condenser microphones underneath our marimba. Now notice we have them mounted down with a good amount of distance between the microphone and the bars. I see a common mistake with marching bands is people try to put their mics much too high. The problem is, is that the pickup pattern of the microphone doesn't have a wide enough spread to pick up all the bars equally. So what happens is you only get a couple of the bars, so when you listen back or you're playing audio through the speakers, you get very low signal and then three or four bars just jump out of the mix really loud. So we're using two microphones spread out on the low and high end, and we've already talked about in the last series about how we can EQ these differently from the board. Now, as far as mounting goes, we found these on-stage boom arms. They're like $10 each, and they're designed to mount microphones on either microphone stands or music stands or on drum hardware for drummers. But this works really well in this application because they mount on the frame right here. I'm running the bar straight down, and then I'm using these uh, additional flexible ends to be able to position my mic, and it gives it a little bit of uh, shock mount as well. So this allows me to have a nice clean mounting right in the middle and then run my mics out with a very low profile. And at the end of the season, I just have to unscrew one screw and I can take it off and it's all stored and ready to go. So that's the way we'll do all the microphones for the marimbas. We'll talk about the cabling in the next series, but before we do that, I want to go talk about soloist mics for the field. Through all of the season of DCI and through all of the marching competitions I saw this year, I saw lots of errors made in miking instrumental soloists. And the most important thing is when that child comes up to play their big solo on the field, that it sounds just as good through the speakers as it does coming out of their horn. And I know you probably know what I'm talking about where you hear things that just don't sound like that characteristic instrument. A lot of that's the speakers you're using, but also it comes down to the microphone. So again, back to our three types. If I'm a trumpet soloist and I know that I just want to play that trumpet and there's a lot of movement behind me on the field and other sounds, I'm going to use this dynamic microphone, this instrument microphone as a very narrow pattern. So that allows me to get up, play my trumpet solo, and not pick up anything else around it. If that's the only thing you're using this microphone for, this one's the way. If I have a situation where I want a little bit of a warmer sound, Maybe it's a trombone, maybe it's a baritone, maybe it's a, um, either a saxophone or another instrument. I may use the dynamic microphone, but more the vocal style. It's a little warmer, it's got a little bit of a wider pickup pattern, so it's great to get like down in a saxophone bell. It's great to get, you know, if the trumpet player or the trombone player is at a different angle and they want to come in a little sideways, you have a little more room to wiggle, which is great. You might want to try both and see what sounds better. Just know that this is going to pick up a little wider, so you have to be careful about different sounds. Now, the most important thing is these are dynamic microphones. These are for one soloist only. 
If you have more than one person playing, maybe it's a woodwind group or it's a trio or quartet or something in, I would strongly suggest going back to your Pro 37 small diaphragm condenser microphone because this is sensitive enough to pick up a wide area. So I see a lot of times we have one microphone up that it may work great for a trumpet soloist, but it does not work for your woodwind choir. So if you have a situation in the show where you're using one mic stand and one microphone and you have multiple solos going on, I would strongly suggest using this Pro 37 condenser mic. You can always turn it down a little bit for the soloist and turn it up a little bit for your players. Now remember, there is a pattern coming out of here. So if I have a quartet, I'm gonna ask those students to step back a little bit, get some distance between the mic so it picks up all those instruments equally. But just know that when that's happening, this microphone is more sensitive and it's going to pick up other things in the field. So work with your jewel writer and your music arranger and think about where the placement of the solo is from an audio standpoint as well. You want to get the rest of the band as far away as possible so the solos can be isolated. That way we can really use that microphone and we can amplify it really well from our Studio Live mixer without having to pick up other things around it. So again, dynamic mics, one instrument, very directional, great for cutting out background noise. Condenser mic is going to be great for a small ensemble quartet, trio, even quintet up on the field, but you're going to need more distance away from the mic. You need to make sure that everyone is in the pickup pattern, so you're going to make sure that the rest of the ensemble is far away. So that's enough on microphones for now. The next series, we're going to get into cabling and how to hook all of this up quickly and efficiently.